Welcome back, everybody. So we're discussing blowguns and poisons and the blow blowgun application of said poison. Um, so how do we want to do this? I think the hard thing would be if, if any creature was armored or thick skins. It does that, say... Uh, Target's protected by full seat of brigandine mail or plate. The attacker suffers a minus four attack roll. So that'd be like a cold shot to the unarmed part of the body. Yeah. Yeah. The way I, I'm thinking of using it would be at like we're at a dinner party or something, and I just like. Oh, it's a dinner tar party, you pull out this blowgun and shoot people across the mm. table? <laughs> yeah, I mean, not sitting at the table. Maybe I could find a. Concealed area? I don't know. It's a little <laughs> bit speculative, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I, do, I did already get a pin ring. I could just, like, stick it in the back because I'm walking by. So maybe I don't even need a blowgun. Hmm. Your dinner parties would be all the best. Everyone would just be tripping <laughs> from, from needle sticks. <laughs> What's going on? Are there bees in here? <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Pat, we have a blacksmith. Does that mean that you can get your locksmithing tools a little bit cheaper if, if we do it in-house? Um, I, I um, had to need all during break since I'm um, an armor smith. We get all of our armor half off, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe you can teach us how to wear it better and we get plus one to AC. Nope. Yeah. What's the point of being an armor smith then if there's no, uh, if it costs exactly the same? I, I, I can make it cheaper in game. Yeah, yeah. Once we start the game, wow. if you go on a bot, make armor, he can sit around. If you guys say, all right, we're going to spend six weeks making this armor, and then you can sit for six weeks while he makes armor. Uh, wouldn't, that have been, wouldn't that have been done in our past then in the same? Uh, I can see where one would think that and expect that, but then that would kind of be the equivalent of saying, take this proficiency and you get all of your gear at half off. And that seems yeah. kind of broken to me. That seems exploitive. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would, would a grappling hook give me a bonus to climb walls or is it required to even do it? Uh, a rope? If you have a rope tied to anything, that yeah, will I have give you a bonus to climb walls. 50 feet of silk rope and a grappling hook. Yeah, that'll give you a, a massive bonus to climb walls if you can hook the rope on something. Oh, the okay. hook so I can basically climb every wall because I'm already at 70%. Yeah. I think with a rope and a wall to push yourself off of, you get an extra like 30% or 40%. Okay. So I'd just be at 95. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, should I roll um, hit points for the donkey? A 3d8. Would you name the donkey? Oh, donkey. Um, Doris. Oh, Doris. that's a good name. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Ooh. That's terrible. Much <laughs> little Doris. She's she's an old nag. <laughs> Maybe you should just buy a new donkey. <laughs> she was actually William's donkey from back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> she uses to bite the dust. It, it's blind in one eye. <laughs> oh god. Um, if you want, you can buy a new donkey if you just want to throw away eight gold. You can keep buying donkeys until you have one. Of I, I, I think in this case we might need to because a stray rock will take it down. I'm going to buy my own personal donkey. Oh, we're gonna, there we go. All right. That, so, that, that's better. Do make a note that you have an old broken down nag in the family. Yeah. <laughs> my donkey is, uh, best is a young, young, little, young little donkey called Spike. Spike. All right. Spike. 16. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, uh, in that case, uh, let's disregard mine then because I don't really <laughs> the second one. Okay. Or do you? I mean, we, we can keep my. Like oh, it's, it's the same here point. So, okay. So yeah. the new new donkey is called Spike. Uh, oh. Did you want to write that on your character sheet? I'll, yeah. I'll write the old. I'll keep it, keep it here. I'll write the old nag. Now, because we have two donkeys, Neil, we also have then one gold piece per month upkeep on them. Fantastic. Right. Have you edited the 
the donkey costs? Um, our uh, so it brings our total album. cost of living to two hundred and forty-one gold a month. Are you including all the non-skilled family members? Uh, Clara, yes. Mary, Isabel, Sarah. It's um, I believe in total we had seven of those non-skilled people, and there are five apiece, from my understanding, which is thirty-five gold a month. And well, then I, from our there, there's the party. There are one, two, three, four, five unskilled people and three skilled people. Okay, so that lowers it by ten then. So we are at 231 gold a month. Can we uh, kill off Joseph, Joseph's wife? <laughs> Why would you be so mean? She died in childbirth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do you came up? What was your number again per month? 230? Um, 231. Oh, because the, the donkeys and shit. The donkeys, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, what else? Um, house emblem. Right. So, Thorn, I had an idea. I don't know what you guys would think of it. A little bit out of the box. Um, I kind of thumbed through the monster manual a little bit. And let's see if I can get this. The red dragon, its horns are red. So, maybe um, the thorn in the emblem could be like a red dragon's horn. I don't know. Hmm. It's an ideal something to spin off of. I was thinking maybe a red rose surrounded by like thorn vines, but that's pretty generic. Yeah, that's good. Which is the god that has the, the rose symbol? Oh, there's a god with the rose symbol, that's probably. Oh. I got all the symbols in this binder, you know, binder of mine. You At uh, Reluna. The, the goddess of passion. Uh, yep. Yeah. Which Which is like, if our symbol is a, a rose with fawns, then it... maybe maybe William was a devout follower of Reluna. Hmm. Hmm. Probably how he. Young wife. <laughs> what do you think, Neil? What's that face mean? Uh. Uh, I'm just imagining that the, the the oddness of a, a warrior who goes and does all these things, but is a devout follower. Mm -hmm. of, like, it makes sense. Good you know, point. you could take a um, yeah, I could see that. Just a very mm -hmm. passionate man who loves this and loves that, and goes <laughs> you know, really into really passionate about the things that he does and the people that he does and. He's just in people it. he does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And maybe maybe also that would um kind of play into why he took this orphan boy in that he found in the woods. Because he was passionate for the orphan boy? <laughs> oh okay. No, 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 never mind, never mind. Never mind. That's um, weird. The other thing we need to I know is roll. But when were you found? How long ago was that? How old were you? Um, maybe like ten years old. Okay, so you've been a, a member of this family for ten years. Yes. Okay. Um. All right. So I've got our family document here. I'm gonna make a post it online somewhere for us to find. I can just put it in. Drive player assets, family tree. Here we go. Would you say someone who seeks power and doesn't care about what methods he uses is that evil or neutral? That's evil. Okay. <laughs> That's like the definition of where, evil. Like I. I think I read something where they were trying to argue that neutral was just you only care about yourself. Um, that, that sounds was, like an evil person trying to say I'm really not that bad, evil. guys. Trust me on this. Neutral yeah. is only care not only caring about yourself, but not caring about anyone else. That is, 
That is like the yeah like definition of evil to me. I guess I'm evil then. I mean, the thing is, is like D&D, the, the concept of good and evil has always been very polarized, whereas in the real world, it doesn't really apply. So yeah, that's yeah. like, so like evil but just being non-altruistic is not specifically the D&D definition of evil. Evil is, you know, you are actively against it. You know, good is you are, you venerate life. But yeah, and yeah, generally I, speaking. I say my character is evil, but I will at points be very <laughs> altruistic just for my own purposes. Yeah, that, that's still evil. Getting away from the chaos, uh, um, chaotic evil and the psychoticness of Jonathan, but still be evil. I'll play good. Two I, selfish I, people, I, a good person, and GF? Um, I'm probably more uh, chaos neutral, but with good tendencies. So you're just kind of selfish. Selfish. He owes his life to his family, and everything he does will be for the family. Okay. Uh, The family tree document is in that folder online. If you guys want to take a look at it, and I'll post a link to it in chat. Okay. So Marcus, he's three years old. Yes. Can he speak? What I don't know. What age do infants begin to speak? Uh two. Well then he can start speaking. I think by three he can hold up a bit of a conversation, right? It's been a very long time since I've had a two or three year old anywhere in my yeah. life. Okay. Well Yeah, you can't stop him. We'll go talk to him. <laughs> um, It'll be fun to role play. <laughs> Not really looking forward to that, but okay. Uh, okay. We could always, we could always just make him one, just to just to make it a little bit easier on Neil. <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe they maybe they just still talk like goblins. <laughs> We need, we need the three-year-old. We need the three-year-old. We'll consult with the three-year-old for all of our schemes. <laughs> the engineer. He is an engineer after all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can, can we kill off Isabel? <laughs> yeah, we were deciding which family members are alive or dead at this point. Oh, right. Okay, so maybe that doc was premature. So which family members are alive and which ones are dead? I'd say, I mean, Isabel's dead. I'd say maybe um, uh, died in childbirth. I think that's a good idea. So what's that? Uh, died 36 AS. No, 31 AS. No, wait, well, yeah, that makes sense. I guess that's fine. I'm trying to think of, like, justification for people being dead, and that seems like one of the only good ones, considering we're a noble family. Well, and, uh, uh, illness also happens. Mm. Yeah. If if William and Joseph have any parents, they're dead because they're already old. Yeah, yeah very yeah. old. We could have a hundred year old sage <laughs> Henry two point oh just sits in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't we discuss having a drunk uncle named Roderick that doesn't do anything? Yeah. <laughs> We that. I don't know if he could live to a hundred by drinking all the time, though. Yeah, no. Who you knows? Maybe it's the secret to long life. Maybe, um, that's, maybe that's the owner of the brewery. <laughs> uh, we've also got um, so we've got two socialites in Sarah and Mary. Uh, hold on, we need to figure out when it was that Isabel died. Died in childbirth with Max. Was that yeah, it? Yeah, childbirth Max at thirty-one AS. Yeah. Okay, so she died at age 20. Yeah. Okay, died 31 AS. Okay. Uh, continue. Who else do you have going on? All right, do you so want to murder no, anyone else? No, I don't, I don't think we can. Like, we've got Sarah and Mary as our socialites. And Clara. Clara. Oh, and Clara as well, yeah. That's and Marcus. True. And Marcus, yeah. yeah. So, 
Sarah, he's, Mary. He's a socialite with all the other babies. Sarah, Mary, and Clara being your socialites is going to be interesting because none of them were of them born into nobility. They've all been married mm. into it. So while they may properly be able to socialize with the other nobles because they are married into the family, that does present an interesting angle where they're all yeah. lowborn. Just makes, just makes all the other nobles look down on us more. Yeah. yeah. More fuel for my communist <laughs> uprising. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, and we don't want Marcus to be dead, right? No. Marcus is no. He's the heart and soul of the family. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the other thing is, is Mary being like 50. <laughs> Mary being fifty and being in the in the scene for a very long time, I I, I dare say that like she probably passed very well as a noble these days. Yeah, I mean she's she's been doing this for at least thirty three years, so yeah. she will be Sarah, more blended in definitely. Sarah and Clara, Clara though, ooh, they might be out out of their depth. Yeah. Yeah. So Luther, you should figure out when it was that you when and why and how you and Clara got together and when it was that you guys got married and all that jazz. Um, you yeah. don't have to come up with it right now, but before the start next week, you should know those details. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't give you the uh, the height and weight of this character. Oh, yeah, I need height and weight for all y'all. Yeah, I was just going to steam that. Um, I'm going to go with six foot, and I think... 190 it sounds about right six foot zero 190 yeah okay oh and you are i'm gonna ask again what's your age age 24 okay and stefan age height weight okay so age is 18 the size is five foot six and i'm 179 pounds 179 and ty barodite um, six foot two hundred thirty-five pounds. Six foot two thirty-five. Yes. And age again. Um, twenty. Okay. And Luther height, weight, age. Uh, five seven one forty. Thirty-three years old. Forty. Thirty-three years old. Perfect. <clears throat> And the uh, the weapon damage needs plus two on mine. Right. Yep. Okay, uh, 2d4 plus two for the spear and for the javelin. Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's update these things. It's all correct. Kick in now. Cool. Does anyone else have a shield? I have a shield. Okay. Can I roll no. hotness for Clara? Yes. Please um, get a three. Please get a three. Please get a three. <laughs> oh. You can just. Oh yeah, I'm okay. punching. Average. Uh, Bradley, you're specialized in your shield. Yes. Okay, so you both have 15 dash 18 AC. Yes. Um. Luther, you have chainmail as well. 15 AC. And the shield. Yeah. Right. Everyone's got chainmail. And yep. Ginger and hmm. Tybrodite are the only ones with shields. No, I have a shield too. You have a shield too. Yeah. Do you have a buckler or an aspis? Aspis. Okay. So, hey Neil, um, us make three it? with the shields. Can we do a shield wall? Yes. <laughs> the three of you have shields. You can make a shield wall, uh, and we might even use shield walls tactics from the combat and tactics if that's what you guys want to do. Um, you're definitely family members. You can learn how to fight together in a shield wall without any problem. You can practice it. Um. I don't have a spear though. Do you need a spear for a shield wall? Uh, uh, the Romans I, use swords on their shield walls, so I'm fairly comfortable with that happening. If you yeah, want a spear, then you can just take one off the, the donkey. The, the the first rank was shield, uh, shield and, and like short spear or sword, but then like long spears for the back rank. Yeah, that's well, that's a good way of doing a shield wall, but you don't have to have multiple layers. Um, there is something about the shield, a shield wall set up here where you guys go, form in close quarters, and I think you end up like giving each other plus one to AC because your shields are overlapping each other a little bit. Mm. Um, let me shield wall. 
page 39 of the Combat and Tactics. Let's take a look. Da 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 Mem, let's see. If the creatures stay along an even line in close order, they can form a shield wall by overlapping the shields. The shields must be medium or kite shields, so aspa shields. Fighting with the shield wall has several benefits. Versus missile, allied members of the shield wall and any allies behind them are considered to be behind 50% cover, minus four AC, to, or a bonus of four to your AC. Um, shield walls block line of fire indoors or underground, so in dungeon settings, any allies behind the wall can't be targeted by hostile missile fire, and the creatures forming the shield wall can't be struck. Um, in melee, since the members of the wall are in close order, shield walls allow them to concentrate their fighting power. They're also good for controlling enemy movement, especially in narrow areas such as dungeon corridors. Because the shields overlap, all members of the wall gain a one bonus to their AC. Creatures forming a shield wall must be the same size or the wall wouldn't work. In addition, they have to move together to stay linked. A shield wall can only take a half move without breaking apart. Creatures in a shield wall are slightly limited in their choice of armament. They can fight only with one-handed weapons. If they use slashing or bludgeoning weapons, they suffer a minus two penalty to hit. Unless the weapon is a size smaller than the category that they are. So if you're you can slash with a small slashing weapon, or a, a bludgeon with a small bludgeoning weapon. Uh, piercing are not affected. Um, yeah, there you go. So, who do we have behind the shield wall? Uh, the only person, no one. Because you, you would have the three shielded okay. members in the wall, and then Stefan uses a dual wielding short swords. Um, so he could be on the edge, shield wall? or go all the way around back, or maybe do some sort of American football play and just like run up and over the shield wall to jump behind <laughs> the enemy. And then when you get high ground for like coming down on them, boom. Oh. Uh, yeah, but they'd all get all attacks of opportunity for him against him. <laughs> I don't recommend jumping over a shield wall into the enemy line. Um, just as a you know disclaimer, that seems like a yeah. bad idea. In, in in tight spaces, you could you shield wall with just two, so that uh, uh, Orton's character can uh, use spear. I think if you're in like a corridor and you can get two people next to each other and make a shield wall, that's fine. Um, but if you're out in like an open area and you have a shield wall, the enemies are just going to go to the sides and break yes. the wall up. I think shield wall necessitates some sort of enclosure or at least enough people in the front row that it's not going to be flanked. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do we need to work on? Uh, the house motto. Right. Yeah, we haven't done motto. We haven't done uh, the logo. Right. Okay. So I'll uh, do it. Oh. All right, so motto. Really for whatever on motto. I'm not too big. Motto. Maybe something around passion. If 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 our uh, uh, if William was was a passionate man. Yeah. Or is a passionate man. <laughs> Give everything. An interesting one. The SAS one, who dares wins. We were gonna have a roses decision. We could do something like grow the rose or protect the rose. Mm -hmm. Rose of Shield. <laughs> uh, what was that? The Rose is a Shield? No, no, the Rose of Shield. That's a play on words. Because we have a Shield wall. A row of Shield. Uh, oh, Rose of Shield. Oh! <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> Well, 
House Auto, anyone else? Or is it Rose of Shields? Is that, is that it? No. <laughs> that sets our combat motto, isn't it? When we make a shield wall. <laughs> By the thorn of the rose, I don't know. Beauty in the thorn. I'm trying to think of things that um, someone of Reluna would be fond of. I don't know. Hmm. Right now, the best I got is um, Beauty and the Thorn. I just looked up uh, an actual Rose clan from Scotland, and theirs is Constant and True. That sounds good to me. It does sound good. Constant and True, is this your family motto? Could be. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm okay with that one. Okay, so, uh, it was constant and what? And true? Yeah. Uh, what, what about the house colors? I'm guessing red. Sure. Red. Red and white. Divinity colors. Okay. Nice. Mm-hmm. What about red and brown? Um. Mm-hmm. Color of pirates. Red, brown, and white. I don't really like white. I don't know why. We can't do red and green because that's more just the Christmas house. <laughs> <laughs> red and red and brown is uh, it, it will. I just like looked at some images and it, it just looks like um, Valentine's Day stuff. You know, like chocolate and roses. Mm. <clears throat> well, doesn't that work? You're the goddess of your. Founder is all into passion and red and brown yeah. and hearts and roses uh, and um, it does work, yeah. <laughs> or we could do red and purple. Those are good. very passionate colors. Or or red on the black background. I'm a fan of red and black. Thoughts, everyone? I might I might stick with the red and brown for now. Red and brown. Black <laughs> Funeral. Red and red and brown or red and black? What what are we doing here? Red and brown. brown. One more time? Red and brown. Okay, cool. Uh words yes. are constant true, colors are red and brown, sigil is a rose yes okay uh we've got your family members we've got how much money you've spent we've got all your gear all your proficiencies no weapon and non-weapon we've distributed the family i think we sort of i want to take a look at the where's the map at the house Um, I think everything can pretty much stay the same, but we should probably take a look at the the upstairs and reassign rooms since they don't make any sense anymore. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. my room does since I'm the heir still. Well, I wasn't the heir before, but I was the oldest. Uh, it's William and what's his wife's name? Uh, William see. and Mary. Yeah. Wasn't that Mary? That sounds so familiar. Were those some British that's the rulers? Of the college. Ah, that's it. Okay. Um, it's probably named after something else. But... Okay. So then, 
Joseph gets Henry and Jess's place. Um, Raderick, you're... Luther, you're gonna take that room? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Luther and Clara? Yep. Um... So the one that says Jonathan, I could take that one. Sure. Ginger. How did you get to listen to Luther and Clara or not? <laughs> <laughs> um, Stefan and Tyberodite. Where the hell do you guys live? Uh, I'll, I'll probably stay where I am because Tyberodite's older, but he's a bastard. Sorry, adopted. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I guess. Um, they keep you at the end of the hall, down in the back corner, surrounded by <laughs> yeah. empty rooms because uh, yeah, you get to take Amy's place. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't get sued for discriminatory housing one day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we could always put them in the closet down on the uh, ground floor. <laughs> All right, what about Maximilian, Max, and Sarah? They have Susan's room? Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Actually, I think they kind of got screwed on their room. <laughs> Max and Sarah need to share a room with their three year old, maybe. Yeah, Marcus gets his own room. Yeah, okay. Marcus will probably, he Marcus. can have a nursery if you guys want, or you can give him his own room. He can have his own room at age three, but it would have to be like right next to them. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, are we missing anyone? Nope, I don't think so. No. No, that looks fine. So what was Astrid's room will now need to be a guest room. Unless you guys want to change it into something else, you do have a free room now. Uh, it could be think, whatever you want. I think Max and Sarah having like a, a like a, a parents retreat sort of thing. That's like not their small bedroom. Parlor. Yeah, that's not their bedroom. Like somewhere they can just sit and. What would you so call like, this place? That's very strange. Well, well like you can keep it as a small parlor. Like they can they, that can just be their their retreat sort of thing. Okay, but I, I so I'm talking about the. This room, the guest room, the guest room below the small parlor. That used um, to be Astrid's maybe, room. We maybe need a, room for any a other? library since we have an ancient historian. Yeah. Uh, well, the, on the first floor, there is already a study, which yeah. I was oh, thinking yeah. could be the library. I True mean, it that. could just be it could just be the st uh, another storage room for like our winter furniture. Sure. Okay. What are, what are the other things we have? We have engineer. I think we should have an engineer's. Office. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the downstairs study could be the engineering room, or it could be the library, or it could be both. I think we could have two separate rooms. One's the library and one's a... Keep the one downstairs to study, and then that guest one upstairs make it the engineering office. Yeah, because, I mean, that's what... That's just what that office. office. Well, there's also... Um, uh, on the bottom floor, there's a storage room that could be changed to anything. Uh, that could be changed to a, 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 a library or an engineering, uh, what, what do we want to call that? A garage, I guess, a lab? Maybe just an office, something like office. that. Work, workshop? Workshop, yeah. Workshop, yeah. yeah. All right, so does that mean we want to put the storage upstairs and we want to put the workshop in the uh, on the bottom floor in the upper right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sounds good. This is now the workshop. Okay. And down here, it's going to be storage. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got um, downstairs, we've got a study, a training room, which is important because we've got three fighters, um, the atrium, the small parlor, a workshop, a privy, a kitchen, a closet, a trophy room, a main parlor, and a kitchen. Oh, maybe I need like a... Oh, they should have two kitchens. This should be a dining room. Oh, yeah. I don't know why we had two kitchens. you think I should have like a special place for creating poison? I feel like I probably should. You don't want to be creating poison where... That could be done in the workshop, probably. You'll probably share that space. It'd be weird to have it your own poison room. Poison room. <laughs> I just want to keep Marcus away from the poison. Yeah, you could just... You know what? That storage room upstairs could just be changed to the poison room. Okay. Right right no, across from the nursery. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, hmm. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. Is there any other changes you guys want to make to your house? We can't have a we can't have a greenhouse in our house, can we? Instead of it much. You could have a greenhouse out back. Okay, that might be good. Yeah. Since I'm an herbalist. Can we have a blacksmith? A forge? Yes. I don't think there's room for a greenhouse and a forge. You're going to have to pick one. Uh, well, no, maybe you could be... Maybe the reason that you haven't built armor is because while you are a blacksmith, you guys haven't built your own forge yet. Maybe that's why you didn't get... Uh, why you had to buy your gear separately. Because you're, fair, you're a fairly young person, right? You're 20? Yeah. Right, so you would probably have just been... Have, would have recently been learning smithing. Maybe you were an apprentice at a different blacksmith shop in Wadsworth, and then at the start of this, when William gets blinded and everything, uh, you are called back and you end your apprenticeship um, because now you've got to help the family out. And that explains That's why good. you guys didn't spend any extra money or why you, why you didn't get any discounts for the armor, why you don't have a forge, and why you're so young and a blacksmith. Like, you're, you're just finishing up. Cool. Sounds good. Pretty legit. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can add a, if you have the funds, you can add a smithy to your house, or you can try and, like, rent time from another smith somewhere. Um, well, we're going to be adding a few things to you. Good, good. I'm excited to see you guys make some money this time. Ah. Maybe. <laughs> and not die. Um, I do have, I have my own little weed greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we can make our money. Right, uh, is that legal in Wadsworth, Neil? Uh, yeah, of course. It's just no one has time to be stoned because your pro their productivity just goes down and then they'll starve to death. So, you know, I, can, a, I can let the socialites sell it. Right. Well, that's a, it's the sort of thing that maybe the upper class who doesn't actually have to work for a living could use, but all the peasants, you know. Yeah, they don't have time for that. They, they don't have time for that. They, they got shit to do. They don't have, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it would be legal. Uh, there's no morality laws going on around here. And there just one thing. Um, my damage, you currently have it as plus three. That should be plus two, I believe. Should... Yes, you are right. Bradley has plus three to damage. I do. And you have plus one to hit from your strength, don't you? Yes, I do. So all the other is that a plus two to hit, That's I believe. A plus two to hit with your sword and minus one to hit with your sling and dagger. Yes. Cool. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. I know we were talking about potentially having someone in the family who is knighted. I don't know. If, I don't know what you guys think about that now, but maybe interesting. Um, I, I mentioned that that would be one of my characters' like aspirations. Okay. Since he's not technically a true noble. Um, William um, could be knighted if you want. He's the only person in your family that could be. Yeah. What wasn't wasn't that what we decided for him that he was knighted in, uh, by by the countess, which is why he was out and about. Sure. Hmm. That's cool. So, so he, William. Say so he's Eastland. 
<laughs> but he's also a noble, and that's a higher rank, so I don't know how you would... Very strange. Uh, me and Tybarodites could end up becoming knighted, but Tybarodite's a weird adopted person, but I don't know if everyone knows that. <laughs> uh, I think they're all very aware that he's adopted. Especially since he was, since I came in at the age of 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing is definitely, I don't want to say the talk of the town, but that's, that's the sort of information that gets around. And sometimes he's trying to talk and he just says argy bargy instead. <laughs> yeah. A little strange. Um, so I would expect Tiberodite to be appropriately feeling towards goblins. Um, whatever it is, if ever you encounter them. Oh, no, trust me, them. I have I have some plans in place for the goblins, you know. They will uh, they will suffer at my hands. So you you yes. hate them, yeah? Too bad you can't oh, yes. get your favorite enemy. Oh yes. Because <laughs> you know you could have developed that that, that thing where you've you, you've fallen in love with the goblins. Oh, Stockholm syndrome with the goblins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, then why do you run away? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he didn't mean to run away. Maybe they let him out of the cage to go do stuff, and he got lost and picked up by William. And he, all he wants to do is go back to the goblins, but he can't. Yeah. No. It seems <laughs> terrible. His, his whole life is a constant series of escape attempts. Oh, we have him locked in his room all the time. <laughs> Why would you do that to him? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm getting Dude, heights and weights for all of you guys written down. So, what else do we need to do? Is there anything else? Are we done? Um, let me check my sheets. I think we're done. Where would we uh, keep the donkey? Can we keep it on the estate? Uh, the inn in? has some stables, and I think that's... If you don't have a, a, a stable for yourself, you could keep the donkey at the inn stables. That would... Uh, that five silver a month would be the upkeep there. Right, okay. All right, my sheet's ready. I've got the uh, donkey. Donkey's AC? 13. 13. Uh, movement is... 12. Yeah, got that. And I'll make sure to to put the equipment on there when it's holding it. Fantastic. And let's get the last stats over here. Uh, Luther, you've got 12 decks. I have 13 decks. I changed it. Ah! Because I think 12 decks gives you a penalty to some thief skill. Okay. I, think, right. I think a lot of decks is actually give you penalties to thief skills. Yeah, I saw that 13 is like the lowest one where you don't get penalties. So. Um, so does that mean your perception is now 12? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and you are a level one thief with one HP still. Love that. 15-17 AC. You are 5-7. 140 pounds, and you are aged 33. Consistently playing the oldest character in the party. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get the names down here. You are Ginger. You are uh, Luther. Yes. Yeah, so the only person who, the only people who would call me by Marcel would be William and Mary. Everyone else would call me Ginger. I think, even maybe. Joseph and that side of the family would still call me Ginger. Okay. Change this overlay. And look at it. Boom. Stats. Lovely. Um, and I gotta change the stats on the other page too. Alright, so any any last thing we want to do before we call it for the day? Um 
I still need to decide why I got married, I think. <laughs> and why would anyone ever get married? Well, <laughs> well, I think I'm like pretty I'm pretty politically minded and I'm really trying to get the house on the rise. And I think can I arbitrar- arbitrarily decide that Claire is like smart and charismatic? Yeah. Okay, well I think I you know, we met somehow and I figured that she was really smart and charismatic and despite me not being able to marry a miracle, this is like the next best option. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's smart, she's charismatic, She, her family's got something going for it somewhere. Yeah. And you need to keep the family going, so we gotta marry somebody, might as well be the, her. Yep. Cool. True love. Of course. Okay, uh... Anything else? Are we ready to start next week? We are. Yep. All right. Um, I'm going to mark down 10 GP on my character sheet. Just have a little bit of gold. Yeah. Uh, how much gold did you guys spend total? I spent a lot. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, um, I've calculated it all. Um... I know we have 243 gold and six silver left. Um, in total, we spent, give me one second. Seven hundred fifty-six gold and four silver. So what were our expenses? Do we have almost exactly a month buffer? Um, yeah, for one month, we need 231 gold. Okay. Uh, Neil, when we would be starting the campaign? Because if like if we're starting at the end of the month again, then that's really going to be no buffer. That's true. The next play date would be the twenty third, which would mean you'd have two weeks before the end of the month. Um, that was slightly problematic last time. Oh yeah, it it really was. I mean, it was it was set up for failure right from the start. <laughs> 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 Which then put the next month in at 440. Yeah. So that was, that, I would, I mean, if, if we just arbitrarily cheerily start on the first, that would be that would be that would be great. Um. I don't know how that works with you. Well, why don't we start on the 23rd, and we'll just say this month you only have to come up with. Um, order of the expenses. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, and those expenses okay. will have to be paid by the time you guys hit the first. And we'll just say you're starting on October 23rd. Uh, yeah. Cause I'd like to try and keep game time as close to mimicking real time as possible to get a, a good sense of story and shit happening in the world and seasons coming and going and not kind of have these, well, yeah, sure. I don't know what this guy's like right now sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. So if we ever want to do six weeks downtime and make armor, we have to wait that many sessions. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out when okay. when we come to that. We, you know, it might be the sort of thing where you guys have need to make armor for six weeks, and so it might take you eight weeks to do it because God, what's your name? Ty Barrowdite keeps going off and adventuring with you guys for a little while and then coming back and while everyone's healing, Tiberodite's in there pounding away on his anvil. Um, <laughs> or, you know, we'll just see how it goes. Also, a slight issue with me being Australian, I'm going to have the opposite weather sense from you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a little cloud above your head that's just a different weather season. <laughs> <laughs> You're, well, it's spring for you right now. It's getting hot. Yeah, it's um, it's still hit and miss at the moment. Actually, it's been really weird weather this year. This year, and like it's it got some hot days coming and and just been, but then like we have the next three days of massive thunderstorms. So yeah, it's been uh, really weird this year. But yeah, heading into summer. So looking forward to that. That'll be great. All right, well that's it for Age of Strife today, everybody. Tune in next week for session one of Age of Strife season two or Age of Strife reboot or I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with the name for it, but that's that. Uh, players, any last things to say before we head out? Uh, no surprised and excited to be back for round two. 
So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. See you guys later. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. See you.